Hello everyone, welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game I'm making using my own engine. And this week I'm going to be working on the plant's health system and some of the things you have to do to keep your plants happy and healthy. So starting off the day with a bit of planning for this new health update and the way that it's going to work is every plant in the game is going to have a health value and that's going to be determined by multiple factors um, things like watering, how many weeds are around, how well you've fertilized it, and stuff like that. The health value of a plant is also going to affect other components of that plant. So healthier plants will grow faster, they'll produce more vegetables, produce better quality vegetables. Um, of course, if the health value reaches zero, then the plant dies, as demonstrated by this plant over here, which is dying for no reason at all. Um, one thing I'd love to have for this plant, and I'm going to have for the plants in the game, is that if you click on one of the plants, it brings up a UI which shows you a breakdown of the health and all the factors affecting it so that you know um, how to look after the plant. And then finally, I need some sort of visual indication on the plant itself to show whether it's healthy or not. And I think I'm just going to make the leaves of the plant turn brown the more unhealthy it is. So, loads to be getting on with. I'm going to start programming. I thought I'd start off by implementing the information panel that appears when you select an entity in the world, uh, just so we have something visual to look at for the next parts. And um, I'm really not happy with this highlighting effect when you select an entity. I'd much rather have the entity get outlined, um, but it makes sense for me to implement that when I do the big render update in a few weeks time. So I have to stick with this highlighting effect for now. And uh, while I was doing this, it made me realise that the entities don't have any names at the moment, so there's nothing to, to put at the top of the information panel here. So it looks like my next task is to go through all of the entity files and input some names. Got all the names sorted now, so if I click on any object in the world, you can see the information panel correctly shows the right name at the top here. So now I can move on and start implementing some of the health stuff. So next I've been implementing the health component, which I can add to any of the living entities in the game. That uh, for now just has this health value, which is a value between zero and one, indicating how healthy the plant is. And you can see at the moment I've just made them all random values. And then in the game, if I go ahead and select one of these entities, you can see I've also added a health bar to the UI here, which displays that health value. Just been starting work on the factors that affect the health and I've been getting them set up in the UI. And uh, just a reminder, as I've said many times before, I'm not worrying about how the UI looks at the moment. I'm just getting the absolute basic set up um, because after I do the graphical update, I'm also going to do a big UI update where I'm gonna design all of the UI in the game all at once and then make it all look nice then. So just the absolute basics in the UI here, and you can see that the factors now are all shown underneath the health bar and they've all, all got their own bars as well. Um, just using test factors for now, so obviously the next thing I need to do is to implement some actual working factors and I'm going to start with the water factor. Uh, but before I do that, I've got some plants to look after in real life and I've got a few more seeds to plant for my balcony. Got the watering factor working now, so if we have a look at this carrot here, you can see that it's very unhappy with the current water situation because it hasn't been watered in a while. So if I just go ahead and get my watering can and then give all of these carrots here a quick watering. And now if we go back and have a look at the carrot, you can see that it's much happier about the water now. And then as the soil dries out, which it's doing obviously much quicker than it usually would here, that water factor goes all the way back down. And it's not having any effect on the overall health of the carrot yet, but that's what I'm going to be working on next. The health factors now affect the overall health of a plant, so I've added these test factors which I can move up and down manually just for this demonstration. So if the conditions are all good, if the factors are all high, 
then the overall health is unaffected. But as these factors start to drop, you can see it starts to have an effect on the health. The health is, is slowly going down now. And if conditions get even worse, then the health will start to drop more rapidly as indicated by the arrows. Um, but don't worry, all is not lost because if you improve the conditions, look after the plants a bit and get those factors back up again, then the health will start to improve and over time the plant will recover. And the speed at which the health goes up and down and all of the settings related to this, I can choose per plant, uh, which means there are going to be some plants that are really easy to look after. You can neglect them for ages, forget to water them, um, but then a little bit of love and attention and they'll be as good as new very quickly. And then there'll be other more difficult plants to look after, where if you forget to water them just once, they'll never be the same again, no matter how hard you try to revive them. I thought I'd start off the day with a nice early morning bike ride today. The weather has just been so nice recently, I feel like I need to make the most of it before it inevitably gets worse again soon. So the plan for today is I want to work on what happens to the plants when they die and I also want to update their rendering a bit so that I can make the leaves of the plants turn brown to indicate when the plants are unhealthy. So I've got the death stuff pretty much finished already. There wasn't really much to do here um, other than to make sure that when a plant's health reaches zero, that it stays at zero, that it dies, the UI updates, um, the plant can't grow anymore, it's not affected by health anymore, so no matter how much you water it, it's dead and it's going to stay dead. Moving on to the rendering stuff now, getting the plants to turn brown when they're unhealthy. Just, just been doing a bit of work in the shader, getting this set up. So this is what the plants look like normally, and now I can turn them unhealthy and make them all go brown. This is just applying to all entities at the moment. Yeah, even the house here is unhealthy. Um, so it's a bit basic at the moment, but a good start. I've just linked up the entity's health value with how brown this is. It's not quite a linear relationship, there's a bit of a curve. I didn't want them to turn brown too early, and uh, I thought this kind of worked quite well. So you can see the ones on the left here, these are healthy turnips that have been watered. The ones on the right, I haven't watered for a while. And you can see that the unhealthy ones have gone brown, while the healthy ones have stayed nice and green and vibrant. Next up, I thought it made sense that some parts of the model turn more brown than others, um, so I used the alpha components of the original colour of the model to indicate which parts are more affected by the, by the brownness, and you can see the result here. So for the carrots, it's mostly just the leaves that turn brown, and the carrot parts is mostly unaffected, and uh, same kind of thing here with the turnips. So that's pretty much all I wanted to achieve with this rendering update. Um, I'm sure I'll do more on it when I do the big graphical update and I can also tweak all of the colours and the values for the individual plants to make sure they look good, but in general I'm pretty happy with this. For the rest of the day I've just been working on how the health of a plant affects other aspects of its life. So for example, plants that are better looked after will grow faster, um, they'll be more productive. So for example here I've got some healthy tomatoes and some unhealthy ones. If I harvest the healthy ones, you can see I get 75 tomatoes, pretty good. Just sell them quickly. And now if I harvest these unhealthy tomatoes, I only get 47. And the less healthy the tomato plants are, the less tomatoes they'll produce. First up today, I just want to very quickly change something that's been bugging me a bit in the game, uh, which is that the tool that's currently used for harvesting and removing the plants is shears, which obviously doesn't make any sense at all, especially for the, the root vegetables like the carrots and the potatoes. So I'm just going to quickly change it to something a little bit more realistic, and uh, I'm going to change it to a, a gardening fork.
So here's the new fork item in the game. That makes a lot more sense now. Um, using that to dig up the potatoes and the carrots and also to, to dig up any dead plants that you have. Um, good. So, on with some programming. Next up, I've just been making a few small changes to how seeds work, uh, because I thought it was a bit weird that a plant's health could go down while it was still a seed. So now when you place seeds, they are dormant, they're not affected by health, they don't grow, they're just completely idle until you water them. And once you first water them, then they become active. After a while, they'll then germinate, and once they've germinated, that's when all the health stuff kicks in. Just finishing up the seed stuff by updating the UI. So if I click on this seed here, it doesn't show the health stuff anymore because the health stuff isn't relevant while it's in the seed stage. Um, it just says that it needs to be watered. So if I go ahead and do that and then select the seed again, you can see it now says it's germinating. And then of course, once it has germinated, it would then show the regular health panel again. Seeing as we've been talking so much about seeds germinating, I thought I'd quickly show you how the broccoli microgreens are doing. Um, you saw me planting these earlier in the video, that was on Friday, it's now Tuesday, and look how much they've grown already. Just a few more days and they'll be ready to eat. So the health update's basically finished now, and uh, I think I'll finish this video here. Let's just have a quick look at what's coming up next. So I'm going to be working on a few more factors that are going to affect the plant's health few more things that you have to do to keep the plant happy and healthy and then another related update that's going to come soon is that healthier plants are going to produce healthier or better quality fruit and vegetables which will then be able to sell for more there's going to be a few other benefits as well so that's going to be um, one of the reasons why you'd want to keep your plants healthier one other thing that I definitely need to uh, improve with the health update is that there needs to be some sort of visual indication of when a plant's dead because right now you can't tell the difference between a, an unhealthy plant and a dead plant maybe i could have a, an extra model stage for the dead plants or maybe the dead plants could just disappear or something i don't know but that's definitely something i'll have to think about at some point for this week though that's it so thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you all again next time <laughs>